Good morning, good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Good morning, Vicky. Thank you, Vicky, for putting all the information in. It is a glorious Saturday here on Success Saturday. Um, where I am is pretty cloudy. I'm surprised I got any light from the window <laughs> for this uh, live stream. Uh, how has your week been? Good morning, Angie. Oh my gosh, you're up very early this morning. How are you? Yes, if you hear something, I'm like twirling my, my coffee around in my cup. <laughs> I need coffee this morning. I didn't really eat. So today is a day of intermittent fasting, at least until 12. <laughs> yes, so how has your week been? Um, My week has been really great. It was really productive and a lot of stuff happening, but I just felt productive. And I went to ballet for the first time in like 20 years. I went to ballet class. I'm taking an um, an adult beginning ballet class. And it was just nostalgic for me because a lot of people don't know, I was a dancer when I was younger. I minored in dance in college. And since I've been having babies and my oldest is 21, I have not really been doing dance. So after 20 years, I went back into the ballet studio this past Wednesday and it was great. So I want to go back. I'm doing it like once a week um, and it feels good right now once a week. I'm starting slow because <laughs> it's been 20 years. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Mama Davis. How are you? Uh, yeah, Angie, it was, it was great. I almost started crying. It was like, I didn't re realize until the moment I was in the dance studio and doing the little, you know, first and second and fifth and all that stuff. I, I realized that dance was my first love. Like before I had children, I loved to dance and so it was like, I was getting back to my first love. So it was, it was a sweet moment. Uh, for me. All right, y'all. So how? I, tell me in the chat, how's your week been? While you're telling that, me that, we're going to do some housekeeping because we're going to get right into physical touch. That's why you're here. Go ahead and grab your coffee, grab your food, grab a sheet of paper because we always write and take notes. Um, uh, love languages are, are really popular. You know, everybody has love languages and everybody has a bit of all five um and i realized today i was like i didn't really tell you all all five of my i mean you all know my number one love language is quality time um really adobe is updating no remind me later no okay that was weird i want a different comp computer today so i hope it doesn't freak out because something just popped up on my screen <laughs> Um, but my number one love language, my number one love language is quality time. And we talked about quality time last week. And then uh, my number two uh, love language is words of affirmation. And we talked about that the week before. And then for me, physical touch, acts of service and gifts are all the same. They're all 14%. So they're equal. Um and, you know, I just have all five. I just have all five. And you have all five. Um, but some of you have physical touch as your first love language. And some of you have physical touch as your second love language. So if your love language is physical touch first or physical touch second, you might want to listen in closely to this because this is going to be um, important for you. If your physical touch is not first or second, like me, physical touch is like third, then you're still going to want to listen in because you may have a loved one who has physical touch first or second as their love language. And you, and you need to know how to show them love because love languages simply means, it means give me the love that's meaningful to me. And so most people who don't know love languages, they give other people their own love language. Okay, so my love language is quality time. 
My default is that I give other people my love language. I give them quality time. But I, if I'm in tuned with who they are and what their love language is, then it's my responsibility not to give them my love language. My responsibility is to give them their love language. Okay. So if your top two love languages are not physical touch, then you need to listen on how to give someone with physical touch love language, okay? And this is going to be a touchy situation for someone because, well, for some people, because physical touch can be a negative thing. It could be a negative trigger for people who have experienced negative touch, um, especially as children. Um, so this could be touchy. Um, this is probably the most um, touchy love language. This little piece of hair needs to, if you don't stay over there. <laughs> Good morning, Marva. How are you this morning? Hey, beautiful. Okay. All right. So a little bit of housekeeping. I like to do announcements and all that first. Um, <laughs> we are in the middle of the love language series. So we have two more to do. We have acts of service and we have gifts after this. And we've already done words of affirmation, quality time. So if you have not seen those, go back, go on my YouTube channel and go back and watch those too. And then you'll be all caught up because we're doing physical test today. And then we're going to either do acts of service next week or gifts. I'm going to ask you at the end, which one you want to do next. Also, um, what was I going to say? I'm, I'm doing a series on diabetes. Um, I was diagnosed with diabetes a little over a year ago. Um, I ended up, my A1C was super high. I was like 8.6. I got it down to 5.5. And now I'm doing a series on Sunday. So if you are diabetic or pre-diabetic, come back on Sundays for those videos to try to help you. And just the sharing my journey. I'm sharing my journey. And I'm also helping others um, with those videos because um it's, it's millions and millions of people out there with diabetes and um, we just need some guidance. And your doc, honestly, your doctor doesn't give you guidance all the time. They'll just probably give you some pills and say, you know, go about your way. But um, I have learned a lot uh, about myself in this journey. And so I'm just sharing on Sundays. Um, if you have not already, please go to the Facebook group, okay? Go to the Facebook group. Um, my Facebook group is called uh, Success Saturday Circle with Lakeisha. Success Saturday Circle. Um, it's also linked in the description. So you can just go in the description, join the Facebook group. I put a new article in the Facebook group last night. I put an article called 50 Ways to Show Physical Touch. <laughs> So if you want to go there and look at that article after um, this, then by all means, it's free. But you got to be in the Facebook group. And the Facebook group is free. So take a couple seconds and go over to the Facebook group. That's where our success tribe um, just converse with each other all during the week. And um, we put motivation and inspiration and knowledge in that channel. Angie says, education is so important for a disease like diabetes. It takes a lot to really manage it. Angie, you are absolutely right. Um, you know, a lot of people don't understand the seriousness of diabetes and what it can lead to. It's a silent killer. It is definitely a silent killer. And um, if diabetes is not checked, you're talking about, you know, losing your eyesight, losing your limbs. You're talking about um, heart disease, stroke, all that can come out of diabetes. So if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, please take it seriously. And if you're not sure, ask your doctor to check you. That's how I found, found out. I would have never found out that I had full-blown diabetes. I didn't have pre, I had diabetes. And I would have never had found out if I didn't ask my doctor to do a checkup do blood work on everything. So the next time you go to the doctor, tell the doctor to check everything, your cholesterol, blood. I mean, tell them to check everything because they don't automatically check it. And so there's millions of people walking around with diabetes that they don't even know it because the symptoms are not that noticeable. Angie said, it is a silent killer. My mom died at age six. Oh, I'm so sorry. 
She lost her legs, eyes, and was on dialysis. Jesus. Angie, I, I am so sorry about that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it, it's, you know, on my videos, I try to make it fun so people can watch, but I'm doing it because I know it's it's a, it's a serious disease that's affecting millions and millions of people. Good morning, Trika. Hi, y'all. This Angie, Trika client, hacking. Oh, <laughs> this is Trika's client. She's at work. Hi, Angie. Listening while you're doing your relaxer. Aw. <laughs> Hi, Angie. Nice to meet you. Yeah, go ahead and listen because we about to have some good conversation. We about to have good conversation. We're talking about physical touch today. Um, and if you don't know, I am an author. I am a life coach, and I'm so excited. My anniversary is coming up next month. I would have been a life coach for eight years. My eight-year anniversary is next month, so I'm so excited. And this is my book called Try Success and Won't Bite. It's on Amazon. You can get the hardback. You can get the softback. And it's about living your best life through 10 principles of self-excellence. And I've gotten such great reviews on this book. People have said this book has changed their lives. I remember giving this uh, book to a young lady in her 20s. She read it, and she said because of this book, she changed her career path. Y'all, you got to get this book. It is inspiring and it's uplifting and it's fun. It's easy read. The words are not real small and you have uh, spaces in here where you can just write and take notes and um, you can plan. It, it's it's uh, little life coaching in the book. <laughs> yes. So, oh, thank you, Barbara. Mara is calling me Dr. Covert because I'm also in the middle of working on my dissertation, which I got to work on today. Um, my graduation date is August 27th. I am praying I make it. It's in three weeks and I still have to get my dissertation approved. So fingers crossed, I'll be graduating with my doctorate in leadership um, on August 27th. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tribe. You are amazing. Um, let's get started. So physical touch. Um, Physical touch is a love language that is touchy, no pun intended. <laughs> it is touchy because um, a lot of us experience touch in different ways. And so out of all the love languages, I feel like this one is the hardest to give. I want to say that again. Out of all the love languages, I feel like physical touch is the one that's hardest to give. And the reason why is because there's such a negative connotation around touch. So many people have been touched inappropriately. I'm just being honest and in bad ways that it's hard for them to give to someone else this in a positive way, especially if the only way they have experienced it is in a negative way. Now, um, st uh, statistics show that more men have the love language of physical touch in their first or second, more men. And I was thinking about that. Now, this is not scientific, but I'm trying to analyze like why. And um, of course, we know sex is is something that, you know, is, is one thing. But beyond the sex, with physical touch is not only sex. We won't talk about that. Um, but beyond the sex, I really believe like men from their mother's, may get physical touch a lot. So um, like for my my boys, like um, last night I was laying down with my five-year-old and I was just rubbing his hair and then I grabbed his little hand and I'm, so I'm showing my young boy like touch through, through touching him. And I don't know, maybe men hold on to that because I touched my daughter too. Um, but but even men, if they experience touch in a negative way, if they're always getting hit, you know, by their dads, hitting them hard when they're mad and stuff, like men won't like physical touch either. So I think physical touch is really connected to your experience as a child. So same thing as a woman. People think women don't like physical touch. There's plenty of women out there who have physical touch as their first love language. And so it's a myth that, oh, women don't like, yes, we do. We like physical touch. What y'all talking about? <laughs> So, um, but um, I think women um, may have experienced touch in negative ways or not at all. Um, 
And for me, I, I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing. I'm just saying it is what it is. It's, it is the truth about experiences with touch. So um, to give you my experience with physical touch is not my first or second. And I know why, because when I was little, my mom didn't show me love through touch. My mom didn't hug me a lot. She didn't rub my shoulder. She didn't pat my back. My mom didn't do that. My mom showed love in other ways. Like my mom's biggest love was acts of service. And I do believe my mom's number one love language is acts of service herself. And that's why she was giving me acts of service. Remember, people who don't know these love language, they give other people their own love language. So my mom's love language may have been acts of service and my mom gave us acts of service. My mom did a lot for us. She cleaned the house. She cooked for us. She made sure we had food on the table. She was, she, when we hurt ourselves, she put a bandaid on our finger. She gave, she gave us acts of service. So that didn't mean my mom didn't love me. It just means that I, um, as an adult, don't need physical touch for my main source of someone showing me love in a meaningful way. I don't know. Does that make sense to y'all? Y'all let me know in the chat. Does that make sense? So I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing. I'm just saying with physical touch, people have a variety of experiences. Some people, when they were little, had very high physical touch in their family. Everybody, You ever seen those families where everybody just hugs and everybody kisses? You know, and it's cultural. It's physical touch is actually cultural. So in some families and some cultures, physical touch is a norm. So of course, they're going to be more um, wanting of or needing of physical touch as a sign of love when they get older. Okay. Angie says, my husband's first is physical touch and second is acts of service. Physical touch is least on my list. So it makes it hard. Absolutely. Um, Angie, same thing with me and my husband. My husband has physical touch high. I think it's his second one. And physical touch is like down in my low three. So it's it's hard. It was it, I would say it was hard for me for physical touch. Even with my kids, it was hard for me to give my kids hugs and stuff because my mom never gave me hugs. So I was like, oh, I'm supposed to hug my kids. I'm just keeping it real. I I it wasn't my default. It wasn't my default. But um, but I've been blessed. My husband, because he's a physical touch person, he actually taught me. And that's another thing. Let people teach you how they want to be loved. Ask them. Say, how do you want me to show you love? Do you how do you what is the best way for me to show you love? Ask your kids. Ask your kids, what is the best way to show for me to show you love? And they will tell you. So um, my husband helped me. He was like, you know, I noticed you're not hugging the kids. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm not. And I, I just so value that because, you know, somebody loves you when they just give you honest feedback in a loving way. That I, I really honor that. And he was like, oh, you need to hug the kids more. I'm telling you, that was like back when they were little teeny babies. Ever since then, all my kids, they get a lot of hugs and kisses. Sometimes they'd be like squinting, like, mom, don't touch me. I'd be like, mm. <laughs> But I, it, it wasn't my default, and I had to learn it. Same thing with my husband. I had to learn non-intimate touch, okay? There's intimate touch, like we all know. Um, but then there's non-intimate touch that's super, super important. So I'm going to talk about the difference between intimate touch. In, uh, in, I can't even say the word. <laughs> Let me drink some coffee. Okay. <laughs> I am going crazy. Oh, good morning, Joe. Oh, um, there's a difference between intimate touch and non-intimate touch. So I had to learn how to do non-sexual touch because intimate touch is non-sexual. And sexual touch is sexual touch, but intimate touch is has nothing to do with sex. It has to do with connection. Oh, I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say it again. Did y'all write that down? Y'all got your pen and paper. I forgot to tell y'all. Y'all take your pen and paper out. Y'all know I got mine. Take your pen and paper out. Let me say that again. Intimate touch is not about sex. It is about connection. And so at the end of this um, live, I'm going to share with you different ways to show physical touch. And I got a helper. I got a helper that's going to help me. It's, it's not a human helper. <laughs> it's 
not gonna be a human helper. I know you all are like, Lakeisha, what are you talking about? I have a, a non-human helper that's gonna help me help you learn some different ways to show intimate and non-intimate touch. So stay tuned. It's gonna be fine. All right. So let me go to my notes. So physical touch is described as sex, but and hugging or hand holding. Um, if you have physical touch as your primary or secondary love language, um, you prefer physical expressions of love over all other expressions. Okay. So even though I love for um, my husband to spend quality time with me. I love when he gives me words of affirmation and says I'm beautiful. I still love physical touch. I love when he just holds my hand in public. I love when he just touches me while he's talking to me. My husband is a very touchy man when he talks to me. He's like, I got, I got to talk to you about something. He'll put his hand on my shoulder. And because I know it's weird because because I know that his love is physical touch. Even though mine is not physical touch, it makes me feel good because I know he's showing me his love. I don't know. Can y'all understand what I'm saying? I know that even though he's giving me touch, it may not be my primary, but I love it because I know he's giving me his primary. Come on, y'all. Y'all better come on. Am I preaching some love today or what? Y'all better come on with it. All right, so um, so let's talk about um, intimate versus non-intimate touch. So if you meet a stranger, thank you, Angie. <laughs> if you meet a stranger, they're going to give you like non-intimate, like regular touch. Like you don't know it's a stranger touch. A stranger might tap you on your shoulder and say, excuse me. <clears throat> they might say, excuse me. And, and it's probably irritating, but you know. It's not intimate touch or a stranger may, and I'm looking at my notes, y'all, or a stranger may, uh, oh, you may go get your nails done and you get a manicure. Okay. That's not intimate touch, right? That's everybody know you getting your nails done. Ain't nobody trying to be intimate with you while they get doing your nails, unless it's your spouse. Okay. We're going to talk about that later. Um, <laughs> so, you know, when, you know, if you see a baby, <clears throat> Oh, look at the baby. Oh, you pick up the baby and swallow the baby. Okay, that's not intimate, y'all. That's that's just regular touch. Okay. But intimate touch <clears throat> is non-sexual. It's a connecting type of touch. So that's when you're holding someone's hand, <clears throat> you're giving somebody a hug. Um, you are stroking them when you're talking to them. Okay. So Intimate touch is like grabbing somebody from behind. Um, so intimate touch is different. And as a person, you know, you know when something's inappropriate, okay? A coworker should not be grabbing you from behind, okay? A coworker, that's inappropriate touch from a stranger. But your spouse grabbing you from behind is intimate. It, it is appropriate. So I just wanted to make that distinction because sometimes when physical touch is not our primary love language, we are confused about, about that. And then, you know, sex is sex. Okay. All right. So I hope everybody understands the differences. Now, it was fascinating when I took my notes because they said there are research-based benefits. So take your pencil and paper out. But let me tell you about these research. These are pretty powerful. There are research-based benefits around physical touch. So look what this says. It says that physical touch has been researched and it has been proven to build a stronger bond. So physical touch is important in relationships with your kids, with your husband, with your wife, with your partner, with your boyfriend, girlfriend, your mom, your auntie, your sisters. Physical touch is important because it builds bonding. And I'm looking, I'm not, my default is not physical touch. So I'm going to give myself a challenge and I want to challenge you to try to think about who do you love very much, but you hardly ever touch them. 
Who do you love very much, but you hardly ever touch them? You might want to give them a hug this week. <laughs> so I'm going to challenge myself to touch my loved ones that I don't normally touch because it's not my default. Good morning, oh, Michelle. Welcome. Oh, and if your love language is physical touch, if your first or second love language is physical touch, put it in the chat. Also, if you have not taken a physical touch assessment, there's a free physical touch assessment in the Facebook group. Make sure you go over to the Facebook group, um, Success Saturday Circle with Lakeisha. Go over there and get that free test so you can see all five. It scores you on all five of the love languages, okay? So um, this is another point of research that was fascinating about physical touch. It alleviates loneliness. It alleviates loneliness. Trika, is your um, first or second love language physical touch? Let us know, because that's probably why you touchy feely. <laughs> and, oh, I want to say this too. If your primary love language is physical touch, you have to be careful because everybody else's primary love language is not physical touch. So you have to make sure people are comfortable with you touching on them. <laughs> so people just, I like, I remember, how many of y'all watch Iyanla when Fix My Life when it was out? Okay. So I remember a long time ago, one of her earlier, it was like years ago, one of her earlier episodes. Iyanla is her one of her primary love languages has to be physical touch because Iyanla always touches somebody. I don't know if y'all realize that, but Iyanla touches people on her show. So she was giving like sisters. She had she was trying to coach some sisters and she was giving all the sisters a hug. This one sister, y'all, this one sister, she went to go hug the sister. The sister did like this, like it was painful. And Iyanla was like, you don't want me to hug you? And the lady was like, no. And Iyanla was like, what happened to you that you can't take a hug? Like, it was shocking the way, and this lady was an older, she had to be in her 50s or something like that. And she could not take physical touch. So, you, so I can imagine that there was a bit of, a huge bit of trauma behind physical touch for this lady. So if you have physical touch as your primary love language, make sure you honor other people and they, they may not be ready for physical touch. It may be a, attached to trauma and triggers and stuff like that. Good morning, Theodore Linda. And you know, that happened to me. You know, I try to console people sometimes by giving them a hug and some people don't want me to hug them. I back away. I'm just, I back away because like, I don't want to offend anybody. I'm just trying to console you, but you don't want my touch. So I, I'm never going to touch you again. I'm I'm, not, I'm just going to let you initiate touch because I'm not going to touch you. Okay. So you, touch physical touch is very uh, complex. All right. So it alleviates loneliness. So your kids, let's talk about your kids, y'all. And I know you're like, Lakeisha, why are you going back and forth from your spouse to your kids, from your significant other to your kids? Because all people have the same love language. Love language, the physical touch love language is not different from for the adult than the child, other than the sex part. But the intimate and non-intimate touch is the same. Kids like hugs. Kids like for their parents to hug and kiss on them. Okay? Just like your significant other likes you to hug and kiss on them. It's the same. So kids to alleviate their loneliness, make sure you're giving them some physical touch, hug and kiss on them, hold their hand, rub, pat, pat them on the head. This is touch. When you pat a kid on the head, that's touch. Okay. Um, and then the research also shows, look at this, y'all. Touch reduces stress. Touch reduces stress. So don't deprive your loved ones of touch because you actually help them reduce stress. I know when I am, I get stressed in my shoulders. And when my husband come and rub my shoulders, oh my gosh, I melt like butter because <laughs> it's relieving stress. Um, so physical touch relieves stress. So if you go years after years, time after time, hours after hours with no touch, you're probably a very tense person. Touch relieves stress. Without touch, you you tense. You bent all up, bent out of shape. Touch actually reduces stress. I don't know if y'all knew that. Um, 
touch soothes. I say soothes. <laughs> Let me drink some more coffee. <laughs> touch soothes uh, the feeling of rejection. I had no idea. If you're feeling rejected in your relationship, if you're feeling rejected as a child, the best way to handle rejection is through physical touch. Come on, y'all. Isn't that amazing? Physical touch is very powerful. Oh, <laughs> Michelle said she's still half sleep. Michelle, I know, boo, you be staying up all night. I know. She, Michelle, if y'all haven't been over to VinVonAlley.com, y'all get on over there. If y'all haven't been over to... Um, uh, the Cuteness Boutique on the Etsy shop. Michelle and Trika, I talked to them all the time. They're up all night on their, uh, in their shops, and they're working. And um, I honor them because I actually see it. I see it all the time with my eyes. Um, Angie, a good shoulder back rub releases so much of my stress. Yes, me too, Angie. Oh, my gosh. You got to get a massage. You can go to the massage place and get the non-intimate massage you ask your significant other get your intimate massage whatever you like okay you can do whatever you like <laughs> hey you can do whatever you like hey <laughs> we just having a good time y'all but yes a good massage does release stress absolutely and a good rub it don't have to be a massage it just be a rubbing just release stress um, so it's so if you're feeling rejected, rethink your amount of physical touch that you're getting. Um, and this is the best one, y'all. I thought it was this was so powerful, and we never really think about this as women. But research shows that particularly for women, okay, particularly for women, that physical touch is a pain reducer. Physical touch is a pain. It reduces our pain. Ooh, let me say that again. That's powerful. <sighs> Physical touch reduces pain, particularly in women. Now, I'm going to give you a, a good example. Childbirth. If you have had a child, the first thing you want to do is hold somebody's what? Hand. <laughs> you want to hold somebody's hand when you have the baby and you in pain. You want to squeeze the life out of their hand because you're in pain. They said studies have shown when a pregnant woman is having a baby and they're in pain and they're squeezing somebody's hand, it's reducing the pain. What? Come on, y'all. So if you are not a physical touchy person, I am going to encourage you to do more physical touch. It is a healer. Let me say that again. Physical touch, showing love in a physical, in a touchy way, heals people. Ooh. So don't deprive your loved ones of healing. Don't deprive your children of healing. Uh, Theodore Linda says, yes, I believe that I felt tense through quarantine. Then I got to visit my parents and my dad hugged me. This will make me cry. And I immediately didn't feel lonely or stressed. Oh, that is such a beautiful thing, Theodore Linda. Oh, I love it so much. I love it so much. And you may not have said anything to your dad, but oh, what he, he did was a great thing. And you know what? Let's talk about the pandemic, y'all. The pandemic did a number on us as humans because God made us to be in contact with each other. It is a godly thing. If you think about the Bible, let's think about the Bible. How many people touched Jesus and how many people did Jesus touch? Okay. So touch is a godly thing. Come on, y'all. Come on, give it a real. Um, uh oh, somebody said something funny. I know something that releases stress. You know what, Trika? Don't start it. Don't start it, Trika. <laughs> it's rated G. It's rated G. We rated G up in here. <laughs> it's so crazy. 
<laughs> yeah, so we ain't leaving that out, though. We ain't leaving that out, okay? Yes, we ain't leaving that, that rated G stuff out, okay? We know, we know all them rated G things are wonderful. <laughs> and it's, no, it's not really rated G. <laughs> uh, Trika shopping is not touching. <laughs> Y'all are cracking me up. <laughs> shopping, when you go shopping, you are touching stuff. But we're not talking about touching stuff. Y'all stop it, okay? We talk about touching people, even though I love touching stuff. <laughs> I love y'all. Okay. <clears throat> Mara said laying hands. Now, Mara, you just want to hear laying hands. That's not in a, a positive way. But in a way you talking about, if you're talking about positive laying of hands, yes. Amen. <laughs> you know, Mara talking about physical touch with credit cards. I can't. <laughs> Let me touch that credit card. It just makes releases all my pain. <laughs> Y'all better stop it. <laughs> oh gosh, that's hilarious. Um, so here are the negative consequences of not being touched. I'm trying to get back serious, but y'all, y'all cracking me up. Then the long-term effects of not being touched is that it can lead to loneliness, anxiety depression and stress i'm gonna say that again not being touched can lead to loneliness depression anxiety and stress if you think about children who have been in foster care children in school who have behavior problems and emotional problems i can guarantee you they are deprived of touch Because touch is something that all humans need. And so when you deprive a human of touch, it has negative consequences from a child. And then they grow up to be adults that can't even, that just, when somebody try to hug them, they like, they don't even like to be touched. So touching is extremely important. God made us to touch, God touched. And people touched God and got healed. Remember the lady with the issue of blood? She touched the hem of his garment and she got healed. Remember Jesus? He was minding his business doing something. The leper came and said, please heal me. Now, back then, people wasn't touching no lepers. Lepers were considered unclean. And back then in the Bible days, if you touch a leper, you were considered unclean. Jesus touched that leper and healed him. God touches there's plenty of gospel songs out there about touch me, Lord Jesus, and hold on to me. People feel the presence of God as God touching them. So humans need touch. That's how we were made. So please don't deprive your kids. Please don't. I don't care if they're adults. I don't care if you're, my daughter, my daughter told me, my, I don't like to be touched. You think I care that she said that? I hug my daughter all the time. I don't care if she don't like it because she needs it, whether she thinks she likes it or not. She needs mommy to touch her and I'm going to touch her. I see my husband. My husband hugs her all the time. So I don't care if your kids say, I don't like being touched. Touch your kids. You that you that parent, as long as it's in a loving way, not the negative way. Not saying I won't lay my hands on you in a negative way. I'm talking about, I'm talking about touch your kids. Hold their hand, rub their shoulder, pat them on the back, pat them on the head. Hug them. I don't care if they're in their forties. If they're your children, touch them. Just like they don't let to say it. They don't let this grown woman. Her daddy touched her. She melted. <laughs> You're always gonna melt when your parents touch you, um, in a positive way. <laughs> and if it's not attached to any trauma, you're gonna melt. <laughs> I'm not talking about trauma and I'm not talking about triggers. Those are negative touches. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about love, showing love through touch appropriate love through touch. Um, Theodore Linda says, yes, they say babies who are not touched struggle throughout life. Yes, Theodore Linda, you know how um, when you first have a baby and the baby first comes out, what does the doctor do? The doctor wraps the baby really tight 
and gives the baby to you. Why do you think when the baby comes out, the doctor wraps the baby really tight and gives the baby to you? The baby needs physical touch. Babies who come out the womb and who are not touched, they normally don't survive. Babies need touch. That's why even when babies are in the NICU, they put holes in the NICU so you can reach your hands in the NICU and touch the baby. Okay? So all of these things are true. I don't know if you ever thought about touch in this way, but we're going deep with touch today. Okay? Um, I saw this quote about children that I absolutely love, and it says, Time spent playing with children is never wasted. And it's by somebody named Don Lantero. Time spent playing with children is never wasted. If your children have physical touch as their primary language, play with them. Play games with them that involve touch. Um, tag. Tag your it. Or, um, you know, chase them. I got you. And chase them around. Or get like if they're older, play a board game that requires touch, like Twister or um, what's another board game that requires touch? Um, I don't know, but just keep that. Keep yes, yeah, swaddle. Thank you, thank you for the swallowing swaddling word. Yes, babies need to be swaddled. Thank you. <laughs> Marva said Jesus exhibited all the love languages. Yes, yes, Jesus exhibits all the love languages in the Bible. There's evidence of every last love language in the Bible, okay? So it's amazing how, because God is love. Let's break this down real quick. God is love. God is love. So he's going to show all the love languages because he is love itself. He invented the love languages. Come on, y'all. Come on. All right. So um, Oh, they also said with kids, when you know how families give group hugs? Group hug. That's another way to give kids love, doing that group hug. Um, they said uh, doing hand claps with them. You ever play patty cake, patty cake, baker's man, bake me a cake yeah, as fast as you can. Y'all, that is touch. Play patty cake. Patty cake, patty cake, bakers, man. That's touch, y'all. I used to love those games. I used to play those games. We used to be going for it when I was little. I loved it, okay? Um, when you give your kids piggyback rides, when you give your kids piggyback rides, they love it. Get on my shoulders. Or, uh, like my husband, he likes to put my son on his shoulder and walk around. And they, they love that stuff. Like, touch your kids. Um, or, or with your... Um, Mother daughter night, y'all have a spa night, and you're you're giving each other manicures, you're giving each other pedicures, and it's just touch, it's just lighthearted, fun, loving touch with your kids. Okay. Um, even when you just squeeze their hand and say, you know what, I love you, and you just give their hand a squeeze. Oh, kids love that. Um, Trika says, All my babies love to be up under me. <laughs> we watch movies. And be rubbing their feet like I did Rock and Nene. My kids love touch. Oh, yes, because Trika, you, yours, yours must be high physical touch, number one or number two. And as a mom, you don't mind giving physical touch to your your grandbabies and your babies. Okay. And that's another way. Cuddling up with somebody, curling up with someone under a blanket and watching a movie is physical touch, y'all. That's a number of them. That's physical touch. That's quality time. Okay. That's physical touch too. So thank you for that example, um, Trika. All right, now the last thing I want to talk about is I'm gonna get y'all. I'm gonna help y'all that don't have physical touch. If physical touch is hard for you, raise your hand. I'm raising my hand because physical touch is not my first or second. So I have to work at physical touch. I mean, I think I'm better at it now. I think I'm better at physical touch now, but it's still not my one or two. So I still have to work intentionally. So I brought a helper with me y'all and his name is well i didn't even give him a name what should i name him y'all he's he's he gonna help me today oh it's a she because she got pink and she's sparkly this is your she well he, she's gonna help me today what what should we name her she's gonna help me 
talk about some ways we can practice physical touch. This is for people who do not have physical touch, like me, as your primary love language. We're going to practice with, I need a name though. Can y'all help me with a name? I have to work at physical touch. Yes, Angie, me too. So Angie, this is for you. We're going we're gonna to work on physical touch with this thing right here. You see how I'm touching it? So Angie, sparkles. Okay, thank you. <laughs> cuddles. <laughs> I like I like sparkles and cuddles. But I saw sparkles first. All right, I'm going to do sparkles. Uh, I'm going to do sparkles. Marva, I have another one over there. I have a pink one over there, Marva. I'll name that one cuddles. <laughs> All right, this is going to be sparkles, y'all. Sparkles. All right, Sparkles is going to help me because I'm going to um, I have some examples of physical touch. And these examples are all in the article in the Facebook uh -uh, in the Facebook group because I put an article on 50 ways to exhibit 50, 50 ways to exhibit physical touch. I put that in the Facebook group and then I wrote down some. So we're going to practice with Sparkles today. Um, if physical touch is hard for you, get a teddy bear like this is a therapy. Teddy bears are good for therapy. Okay. So if you um if you have a hard time talking to someone, you can practice talking to them with a teddy bear. If you have a hard time touching, you can practice touch with a teddy bear. So as you can see, I'm touching. So I'm hugging the teddy bear. And teddy bear feels so good. I'm patting the teddy bear. So you can do your kids like this. Um my husband loves physical touch. So I'm going to give you an example. Last night when my husband went to work, before he went to work, I rubbed his head. I rubbed his head. His, my husband got bald head. I rubbed his head like this. And he was like, okay, bye. I was like, bye. And he was like, I like that. <laughs> so people who like physical touch, they're going to give you Sign that you're doing something right. So when he said, I like that, I rubbed it again. <laughs> so if you have someone who likes physical touch, just stroke their hair, rub their hair. That's one way, okay? You can rub their hair. We're talking about your spouses now. We talk about your spouse. All right, with your spouse, you can cuddle. So physical touch, you can just sit very close to somebody. You do not have to be touching them. You can just be close enough that they can feel your heat. If you're close enough to somebody like this that they can feel your heat, this is physical touch. Okay, so I want to let you know there's ranges of physical touch. There's really tight, intimate physical touch, and there's the light. I'm going to touch your head. I'm going to sit close to you. People with physical touch like that. They like that closeness, okay? Um, holding hands in public is one thing to hold hands. It's another thing to grab your spouse's hand while you are in public. It, it lets them know that you're not ashamed of touching them in public, okay? So this physical displays of affection. Now, we're not talking about the physical displays of affection that makes other people uncomfortable. Um, recently, me and my husband went to New York and we were walking around the Times Square and we were holding each other's hand. And it was a lot of people in Times Square. But me and my husband were holding each other's hand. And that just gave everybody a quick look. Oh, they must be together. And we felt good about it. So holding your significant other's hand in public is wonderful. It's a wonderful display of physical touch. So if you're uncomfortable with physical touch, you can practice by trying to hold your significant other's hand. Or um, sometimes we lock shoulders. I don't know if I can do this with sparkles. Come on, sparkles. Come out. But we will lock arms and walk. You can lock arms like this and walk to the sign of physical touch. Um, tickling. Now, I don't, tickling hurts me. It, I don't know why. Tickling is not, at first I start laughing, but after a while it's like painful. I don't know. But some people like to tickle. So tickling is a form of physical touch. If you're playing around, I do this a lot, poking. I poke my husband. I'll be like, <laughs> be like poke. not hard, but I'll be poking him. I'll be like, <laughs> he'd be like, <laughs> So that's physical touch. So you could just poke. <laughs> yeah, Angie, you like me. Tickling is, it hurts. Um, I don't know. It's, I think it's my nerves or something. 
Oh, hi, Cassandra D. Welcome to the Success Tribe. So nice to meet you. We're talking about physical touch, love language, and I'm practicing on sparkles. <laughs> so poking, I can take poking. I, I can poke other people. I, I, that's not going to hurt me. <laughs> um, and then what else? Oh, conversational touch. So Angie and other people who have a hard time with physical touch. You can touch conversationally. So while you're talking to somebody, you can say, hey, how are you doing today? And look how I'm touching Sparkle's face while I'm talking. How are you doing? You doing good? Okay. Or I can just pat him on the shoulder. What's going on? You want to talk to me about that? Like, just put your hand on somebody while you're talking to them. <laughs> I do my five-year-old like that. I'd be like, <laughs> Put your hand on people while you're talking to them, okay? Um, let's do a couple more. Oh, this is a good one. I, I can't practice this on sparkles, but taking a bath or taking a shower with your significant other is great. Physical touch is not my primary one, but I don't mind getting in, taking a bath with my husband or hopping in the shower with my husband. I don't mind at all. Um, yes, Angie, I'd be like this. <laughs> And my fire, he just be like, he just be taking it. <laughs> um, but yeah, take a bath, take a shower. Um, here's another one: playing footsies under the table. You know, if you're eating dinner, just take your shoe off and start playing the footsies under the table. Get foot loose, foot loose. Kick off your Sunday shoes. <laughs> so you can play footsies under the table. Um. Angie, another thing you can do is play physical games with your significant other. So play a game that involves physical touch. Um, can anybody think of a game that involves physical touch? Um, let me see. What's a game? Maybe like truth or dare. I mean, truth or dare can be a little touchy. Um, but I can't think of one. Somebody put it in the chat. If you can think of a game. I know I said Twister earlier. But what is another game that two you can play with your significant other that involves touch? I don't know. All right, just think of some. Oh, here's another one. Dancing, dancing, dancing. You can go dancing or you can just dance in your living room. Dance in your living room. Or you can dance like this in your living room. Hey. With your significant other. Thank you, Sparkles. Sparkles is a good sport. <laughs> so dancing with your spouse, waltzing, doing the salsa. All those dances are great for physical touch. So you can dance and it's good to move. It's good to move. All right, y'all. That was my last one. <laughs> Sparkles was a good sport. Sparkles helped me. <laughs> um. Angie said, one reason I avoid physical touch with my husband is because he always thinks it will lead to sex. Sometimes I just want to give him love and not sex. Yeah. So Angie, you have to communicate with your husband. Okay. Communicate with your husband. If you're talking to him and touching him, because he probably thinks that that is how it normally is, but have the conversation. I always tell people, give your spouse the love language test. Okay, Angie. Give him the love language test and then have the conversation with each other about it. That's how my husband and I got really good at it. I gave him the test and I shared with him my results. And I was like, oh my gosh, yours is physical touch. And he was like, yeah, I love when you touch me. And I love when you, when you took up. And, and he's like talking to me and I'm like processing it. <laughs> so you got, you, you can't just start all of a sudden touching on your spouse. They're going to think you're crazy. They're going to be like, what, what you, what you doing that for? You have to, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Time check. Yes. Cause I got to go to Success My Way Academy, but you have to um, communicate. Communication is so important with your significant other. So give them the test, have a love language conversation and talk about touch. Talk about words of affirmation. Talk about quality time. Have the conversation and make it converse over food. I notice when my husband is eating, we can talk about anything because he's in a happy mode. Converse over food. That's the perfect way to start the conversation, okay? 
All right. All right. So I'm going to put sparkles down and I need you all to tell me which love language you want to talk about next week. Okay. So we have two more left. We have acts of service and gifts. So should I talk about acts of service next week or should I talk about gifts? And comment in the chat if you enjoyed physical touch. Let me know if you got something new, something, it, or it may it just um, confirmed some stuff for you, or it made you, um, it gave you a renewed sense of what physical touch is. Comment to me and let me know if you like that. Also, like this video. Like this video if you like this physical touch uh, lesson today. And tell me which one you want to do. Should we do gifts next week or should we do acts of service? And um. I'm trying to get my husband on here, y'all. It's very difficult because his his schedule is different from mine. But I'm trying to get my husband on here too, so we can have like a couple's conversation about love languages. Acts of service. There we go. All right. Acts of service will be next week. Uh, Joan says she loved the physical physical touch. Thank you, Joan. Okay. And acts of service. All right. You got it. Acts of service. We will talk about acts of service next week. So, oh my gosh, y'all. Y'all have been good sports today. <laughs> yes, confirmed ways to husband. Great, great Cassandra. Fantastic. Y'all have been good sports. Remember go, to go over to the Facebook group. That's why I give you reminders. I give you resources. I give you knowledge. And I give you inspiration. I have wonderful administrators over there. Thank you, LaFrancis. Thank you, Vicky, who are over there. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Trika, um, who are over there just posting stuff. And so continue to go to the Facebook group. It's called Success Saturday Circle with Lakeisha. The link is in the description to the Facebook group. Love today's conversation. Thank you for the feedback, Marva. I appreciate it. All right. Y'all know what I'm about to say. Today is self-love Saturday. Woo. Give yourself some love today, y'all. What are you going to do today? What are you going to do? I mean, what am I going to do? I think I'm just going to spend time with my husband and my kids. I, I love spending time with them. So we might go to a park or we may go out to eat. That's what I want to do today. So whatever you want to do today to show yourself some love, make sure you do it today. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. And I'll see you in the next video. Love you guys. Bye, friends.